What's up everyone, Adrian here, and once again, it's time to unveil and review my entire passive income-focused portfolio. If you're new to this channel, welcome. The mission of this channel is to help everyday working people to invest on their own in order to build their own stream of passive income so you could enhance your quality of life. The good news for you is that this video wasn't clickbait. My numbers are 100% real, and I will show them to you from A to Z. I get many, many comments and emails from you guys telling me that you really appreciate the honesty the openness and my down-to-earthness by showing you everything so i will continue to do so every single month because i know it helps please keep hitting that like button and subscribing so you don't miss out on my future content and also my community posts and surveys i do a survey every single month so you the viewer can decide what topic i cover next and all you need to do to vote uh, is to be subscribed so the survey will be out tomorrow so if you're not subscribed already and you want to vote you know what to do so just a quick reminder of my investing strategy and some important other reminders before i show you everything i am a long-term buy and hold income focused or income seeking investor so the primary objective of this strategy is to generate high and consistent passive income via dividends and distributions every single month um, so most if not all my returns do come don't come from capital appreciation or with stock prices going up it comes from the income i get or the passive income this means that my main portfolio mostly holds stocks and funds that invest in blue chip corporations and that use income enhancing strategies like covered calls that provide a dividend uh, with the intent of basically holding them for a really long time, if not forever, so we can live off the passive income they provide. So this strategy has enabled my wife and I to become financially independent uh, in our mid thirties back in 2019. So check out my financial freedom journey video if you wanna see our whole story. It's an older video, but I definitely will make an updated video on that as soon as I can. So my strategy might not be fun, exciting, or mainstream, but I could promise you that it works. You just need to stay focused and disciplined, guys. Slow and steady wins the rat race. Also, keep in mind, I am not against the more mainstream growth strategy where you could just buy the popular index funds like from Vanguard or iShares. And I am not against the other popular strategy, which is the dividend growth strategy where you either hold single dividend stocks or dividend themed uh, ETF. So there is no right or wrong way of investing, in my opinion, guys. But the key word is investing, um, buying GameStop, AMC, crypto, the new AI or drone stock is not investing guys that's speculating don't forget that so four quick reminders before I show you everything this is my main portfolio and is made up of a combination of four investing accounts my TFSA account and my cash account or my non-registered regular account and my wife's TFSA and her cash account so the income that it, these four accounts generate is what we use to pay off all our living expenses so the dividends distributions are extracted from those accounts every single month and sent straight to our bank account so we do not use the drips for these accounts number two the uh, this main portfolio that i'm going to show you does not include our rrsp accounts or our retirement accounts those are completely separate and i have another video covering our uh, covering our two rrsp accounts in detail if ever you're interested to know what we hold in those the reason i keep them separate is simply because how the rrsp works right as you know they're retirement accounts and you shouldn't withdraw any of the money until later on until you turn them into a riff so the dividends and distributions from those accounts they still use the income strategy by the way so they're just compounding uh, every single month number three i will quickly show you my four accounts directly in my broker account so i use td as a broker so you can see how my capital is doing even though it's definitely not my biggest concern um, as an income investor and then i'll show you my portfolio spreadsheet which is the combination of these four accounts and we'll go through each fund one by one Number four, last but not least, you could download my spreadsheet that I'm about to show you um, for free on my website. You just need to click on the free tools and resources section in the top menu. It's passiveincomeinvesting.ca. It will be the very first download at the top. So um, all the info is going to be in the video description. All the link, the links to my website is going to be there. So without further ado, let's check out the entire portfolio together. <music> All 
right guys very quickly i'll show you my four investing accounts so this is my cash account and honestly the reason really why i'm showing you this i don't really don't need to number one so you actually believe what i'm saying here because you know when i show my portfolio or my spreadsheet uh, people could just think well it's just a spreadsheet it's you know it's he could just be making it up so this is why i'm showing you my accounts that's the first reason second reason i also want to show you how my investments are doing in terms of capital gain or capital uh, appreciation because i get a lot of criticisms uh you know my strategy that especially the income strategy that my um my investments will never go up in value they will come you know stay stagnant forever it's simply not true so even um, funds that use cover calls or income enhancing strategies yes they will never grow as much as index funds um, but that's not their point their point is income not growth but you still will get some growth as you could see i am up eighty thousand dollars in this account or 32 percent so just want to show you that because i'm pretty much i mean we're at the height of the market the markets are reaching all-time highs and i won't go through them all one by one but I'm, as you could see i'm pretty much up on everything except for uh, financial 15 this is a split fund that did a reverse split and i owned it before the crap before the reverse split that's why i'm still down on it but hey only minus 10 percent here which is not so bad uh, key word of course is uh, unrealized right i talked a little bit about it in my last video where i i responded to stock trades covered call video so um total return I mean, it's all unrealized. It's not real. This is just on paper. So tomorrow, next week, guys, if there's a market crash, this 80,000 could go to zero. It could go to minus 75,000. I really don't care. As a passive income investor, um, you know, this could be 100,000, 300,000. Uh, it, it doesn't stir up any emotions at all. This number, I can't tell you how little it means to me because that, you know, I'm a buy and hold investor. I, I don't buy low to sell high. I buy and hold and collect the income. So let's check out real quick my uh, TFSA account now. TFSA account is here. A similar story. I'm up a little bit on it. Um, I am. I would have been up a little bit more if um, I didn't have financial 15 in here. So obviously financial 15 is dragging it down a little bit. But once again, besides that, I'm pretty much up on everything. Um, so I'll show you my wife's accounts as well now. Here is my wife's or Erica's um, regular cash account. So as you could see, she's also up 16% or 45K in this account. Um, so it's doing pretty pretty well. Every, she's up on everything except for um, the really the uh, the more stagnant funds that are like CLM and QILD that are really designed for high income that don't move much. But I mean, CLM down 6%. A QILD down 2% and then there's also financial 15 down 9% but uh, in full disclosure I do have two speculative positions these are the only two speculative positions I have is the uh, pur purpose Bitcoin ETF and I'm down 35% uh, on it so this is what you get when you speculate guys so uh, you know I'm not a big fan of Bitcoin I honestly just picked this one up for entertainment purposes and the other speculative position is a cannabis ETF that uses leverage it does not have income like HMMJ but I'll show you I'll, I'll show you that in a second when I show you my entire portfolio my spreadsheet but for this one i am up almost a thousand dollars because cannabis has picked up lately so here's my wife's cash account let's quickly show you i'll quickly show you her tfsa and then we'll look into the spreadsheet here is erica's tfsa account so it's doing a lot better than mine uh it's up twenty thousand or 27 percent. so you can see what's in here and it's really the the really high yield stuff like the split funds we like to keep the high yield stuff in our tfsas and and reits as well because it helps to free up space for next year so if you didn't know whenever you if you extract dividends or distributions from your tfsa account every single month like we do well whatever you extract you could put put back in next year so this account is actually making about eight and nine thousand dollars a year so when 2022 hits i will be able to put eight to nine thousand dollars back in the tfsa plus whatever the new contribution limit is if it's six thousand dollars well we're going to be able to contribute some somewhere like 14 or fifteen thousand dollars in the tfsa so it's a really cool trick if you're an income investor so keep that in mind guys if you uh, of course you could just let it in let it stay in there and compound with the drip but if you're like us we take it out every single month so uh, once the new year comes along uh, you basically increase your TFSA contribution room by doing so. So now let's check out all these, the stocks uh, and funds one by one in the spreadsheet. 
All right, guys, this is the spreadsheet. So this is basically the four accounts together. So we'll go through all the stocks uh, and funds together here. Hopefully it's big enough for you to see it. If it's too small, you could simply uh, download uh, the, the file on my website. So if you go to passiveinvesting.ca, you click on uh, right here, free tools and resources. The first download will be the portfolio. So this is obviously the old one, but when I am uh, when I film this, I'm gonna update the, the new one. So you just gotta click on download. The only thing just don't use Firefox like I do I use Chrome because if you use Firefox and you click on download this is what you will get so let's go through the funds one by one and then I'll show you my the summary of my portfolio so we're starting with our income funds uh, first so we'll go through them one by one first one is of course my OG my favorite income fund of all time I made a, a recent video on this uh, income fund the canoe financial EIT income fund. So this is a probably my most favorite fund because it's one of the first funds I've ever invested in years and years ago. Um, it basically has mixed sectors. So it has North American dividend stocks. So some mostly Canadian, but also a lot of US in here. So this one has been doing really, really well. It's been going up and up and up constantly. I'm doing really, really well on it. As you can see, it's a big part of my portfolio, probably the biggest at 5.98%. Um, so I'm making almost 12% yield on it. But right now, because it's higher, you're making a little under 10 on it. But either way, definitely one of my best holdings. Next one is the Brookfield Global Infrastructure Securities Income Fund. This one's not so bad. Um, the only downside is it does have a quarterly distribution instead of a monthly. Obviously, I use the income, um, so I prefer monthly income. But either way, this is a really good fund. Um, that focuses on infrastructure stocks. So anything to do with utilities and airports and toll road, roads and uh, there's some green energy in there, communication towers, anything to do with infrastructure this has. And I really, really like the fund manager. And when it comes to real estate or infrastructure, Brookfield is one of the top of the top in Canada. The only downside with this fund, uh, you know, in all disclosures that it's trading at a pretty uh, big premium. So if you don't know what that means, I'll show you real quick. By the way, once you download the Excel file, you will notice that all my stock symbols are hyperlinks, which will bring you directly to the fund's website. So if you actually look here, you could see that the net asset value per share, so what the what one share is actually worth is five dollars and three cents but it right now on the market it's at seven dollars and 76 cents so this is what i mean when it's trading at a really really big premium so i would probably stay away from this one uh for now not saying it's a bad fund obviously i really like it but now is uh you know a lot of funds are trading at premiums however next ones are from quadravest i absolutely love the, I know I keep saying it in every unveil, but I love these ones. They're technically, um, you know, they're not ETFs. They're technically income funds, but really they're basically covered call ETFs, guys. So that's why there's a little star. It's because they use the covered call strategy. So DS is pretty much a mirror image of DFN uh, or um, Dividend 15 Split Corporation from Quadravest as well. So it has 15 Canadian dividend stocks, the big six banks, the life insurance companies, Bell, Talis, Enbridge. So really... The, you know, the, the most classic, the best dividend stocks in Canada. And Inc.un has uh, quite a few, actually. It has like, like 15 stocks, but it only has exclusively financial stocks. But it has uh, US and Canada. A nice 50-50 split. So really the best financial stocks. Only the big guys in North America. And why I really like these funds is because they have a very unique distribution policy or dividend policy. So if the fund goes up and up and up, the dividend goes up. So the dividend actually changes every month and it's set at 10%, like I wrote here, of the stock price. So very easy if the stock price of the fund is $10, well, the dividend, 10% of $10 is $1. So $1 would be your annual dividend divided by 12 and you'll get the dividend for the month. So it sounds a bit more complicated than it is, but, uh, and I have another video that explains it in detail, but uh, these are really, really good. And because they keep going up and up and up, my dividend yields are going through the roof, especially for Inc.un. I mean, I have, it's over $15 now. And uh, I, my book cost is uh, 757. So as you could see, because it's going up and up and up, my yield keeps going up and up and up. So same thing for DS, just not as much, uh, but still 11.99. I mean, it's beating, it's beating the canoe fund for, for, uh, I mean, that's how powerful it is. 
Next one is CLM. CLM is one of the three U.S. listed funds that I have. Uh, most of my U.S. listed funds are in, are in my RSP. I do have more CLM in my RSP. So this one is kind of like the canoe equivalent in the U.S. So it has mostly blue chip stocks in the U.S. Very, very, what, ma what makes this one special is the very uh, aggressive distribution policy. So where this one is 10% of the stock price, CLM is... 10% uh, of the, uh, sorry, 21% of the NAV. CLM uh, is a great time to pick up, by the way. Usually this one trades at a big premium, 10% premium. Next one is FAP. So this is really for, I mean, this is a newer addition uh, to my portfolio. It focuses on uh, Asia Pacific fixed income. So government bonds, corporate, go corporate bonds. Um, the reason why I picked it up is because it's offering a great yield at 9% and it's currently trading at a very big discount. Uh, basically the opposite of the Brookfield that I showed you. So if you actually go to the website, you could see that the net asset value is 386 a share, but it's trading at 296 a share. So a nice 23% discount. Um, so uh, that's why I really picked it up because I because of that discount and i like the yield plus it gave me some really nice diversification especially for us canadians it's hard to reach the asia pacific uh, region moving on to etfs now so um this is really my bread and butter uh we'll start with the bmo ones which i absolutely love um, so ZWC, ZWE, ZWG, or what I call the Triforce, I mean, these are really um, focused on the top dividend stocks by region. So ZWC focuses on Canada, ZWE in Europe, and ZWG, a mix of the whole world, except that it does focus a lot on the U.S. market. So absolutely great funds here. They don't have crazy, crazy yield. They're all at about between six and seven right now, but uh, these ones, the, the covered call strategy is it's not as aggressive that's why it's a bit lower but very 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 stable and consistent source of income zph so this is uh, i spoke about this one in one of my stock pick videos i think it was in may um, so this one is a, this is a great place to park money or to use kind of like a cash savings account so zph is what, what we call a put option strategy etf which is the opposite of a covered call uh, strategy so it doesn't hold anything but just makes money by selling put options uh, to make premium so it actually holds like mostly just uh, us t bills or treasury bills so very very safe and the yield is actually pretty pretty good it's always about seven seven and a half percent on this one so i really like this one i'll probably be adding more and this is a good to a place to add money now that the markets are at an all-time high uh, or you know if you want to park some money if you're waiting for the next crash or correction i personally don't do that i don't try to time the market but ever if ever you do well it's better than just putting it in here rather than leaving it in the bank zw zwu sorry covers uh, utilities and telecom in north america so it has electricity companies communication or telecom companies and pipeline companies both in Canada and the US. I really like this one. It's very, very, very consistent. It actually has a low to medium risk rating from BMO, whereas, uh, same with ZPH, by the way, whereas compared to these ones, it's a medium risk rating. So that just proves that, you know, utilities, that ZPH and of course, utilities and telecom are really defensive sectors that don't move much. Uh, ZWK is where I get my uh, US banks exposure. So JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All the top U.S. banks are in here. There's about 16 or 18 or something like that. Um, so this one, I was lucky. I, I got in pretty early uh, during the, the the COVID crash, and that's why I have a 10% yield on it. But right now, it's uh, the yield is a little under 7%. The next four are my CI first asset ETFs. I absolutely love these ones. These are more um, sector themed ETFs. So um, that's what CI focuses on. Um, the only thing is that they do provide their dividends or sorry, their distributions quarterly. So FLI holds, uh, it is financial sector, but it's just life insurance. Okay, it doesn't have the bank. So I really think this one is smart here. You have the top 10 North American life insurance companies, seven in the US, three in Canada. So in Canada, you have Sun Life, Manulife, Great West Life, of course. And in the US, you have uh, Prudential, uh, MetLife, and the other popular ones that are not coming to mind. I don't know them by heart, but FLI, a really cool fund, in my opinion, and really, really high yield as well. 
uh, just keep in mind that the yield and the distributions will fluctuate quarterly for these four ETFs. NXF is the next one. This is my go-to when it comes to energy. I'm not a big, big energy guy, um, but this is really, uh, besides ENS, and I'll show you that in the split funds later, this is my only fund that's really specific for energy. And what I like about this one, it is, it's only the big, big boy. So it has 15 of the top global oil and gas producer companies that's why by the way you have the name giants in these funds you see you'll, you'll even see them for the next one so only the big guys no junior players and this was actually a stock pick uh in, in the, my last stock pick video because i still think oil is uh is low it has a while to go up so this is definitely my go-to now for energy it did replace the hpf uh, ETF from Harvest. So they aggressively cut their distribution. So I just switched my HPF exposure to NXF to get my energy exposure going forward. CGXF is where I get my gold and precious metals uh, exposure. So this, like the other one, only has the big guys. That's why it's called Gold Plus Giants cover call. And they hold, uh, you know, uh, Newmont and uh, Wheaton, Royal Gold, Yamana Gold, Barrick Gold. So really all the big guys. And it's always a good time to pick this one up during a strong bull market uh, because the gold, the precious metal and gold companies tend to do, uh, you know, tend to stay stagnant during a strong bull market. They tend to do really well, however, during market crashes and corrections. So this is a really uh, definitely uh, mandatory for any portfolio to serve as a hedge, if you will. Next one, last one from CI First Asset. This is my go-to when it comes to pure technology. So yes, I have a lot of QILD, which is the NASDAQ, which is almost all technology. But TXF is pure technology. It holds 25 of the biggest technology companies in the world. We're talking about Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, the chip makers, Qualcomm, uh, Google, Facebook. So only the big guys and even the more smaller players and the more speculative players like Zoom, Snap, ServiceNow, so uh, Oracle. So the, I mean, you have the best of the best when it comes to technology. I definitely love this one. And the yield is really the incredible story to tell about this fund. This The yield is just incredible. I haven't seen a yield so high. Uh, for a technology ETF. And that's, of course, thanks to the cover call. So CI First Asset compared to BMO have a very unique cover call strategy. They write at the money cover call strategy instead of out of the money cover call strategy. So they're a lot more aggressive than the BMO ones, um, but they only write the at the money uh, calls on 25% of the portfolio, whereas BMO does it up to 50%. So next ones are the two from uh, Harvest, which I really like. Har uh, HHL, this is my go-to when it comes to healthcare. So this is the top global healthcare companies in the world, mostly in the US, some in Europe. So this is important for us Canadians because on the, in the Canadian market, uh, there's, there are no public uh, corporations that focus on healthcare. So this we're talking about AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Bristol Myers, etc., etc. Just you know, also uh, not just the pharmaceuticals, but also medical equipment. So it has about twenty companies, if I'm not mistaken. Very, very consistent, very, very steady. Uh, and obviously, this is the you know my favorite uh, fund from Harvest. I think it's their most um, smartest fund. It's also their biggest fund. And as you can see by my position size, I really, really like this fund. HUT, HUTL I really like as well. It also focuses on utilities and telecom like ZWU does. The only difference, and this is why I really like it, is it focuses on global exposure instead of just North America. So you have Sweden and Netherlands and Finland and you know the UK and some Europe and some Spain in there. So a lot of stuff that's a lot harder to reach. Um, so this is a really good one. Combine HUT, HUTL with ZWU and you have the best utilities and telecom companies in the world. Simply a no-brainer. Um, IDR is uh, my go-to when it comes to real estate, even though I have a new go-to, uh, which I'll show you in a second with my split fund. So this is a pure organic ETF. It doesn't have covered calls. And that's why there's no star here. So the income or the yield is a bit lower. It's about 6% now. But this with this fund, uh, I think it beats the index style REIT ETFs in Canada like XRE and VRE from iShares and Vanguard because you have higher yield and there's also a bit of active management. I also like the fact that uh, Middlefield, my favorite, one of my favorite fund managers, they are specialized in real estate. The next two are my second and third uh, U.S. listed funds, so QYLD and RYLD. These are aggressive covered call funds. Um, 
by Horizons. Uh, I say Horizons, but uh, sorry, it's Global X. But Global X and Horizons are owned by the same company, a company called Murray Asset Management. So uh, awesome, awesome yield. Uh, even with the 15% withholding tax, I'm still getting you know uh, close to 10% yield. So absolutely incredible when it comes to yield with these two. Um, QYLD focuses on the NASDAQ 100, so it's very tech heavy. But RYLD is really cool because it focuses on the Russell 2000 index. So it has the smaller and medium sized company in the US. So if RYLD is definitely a must, in my opinion, to have that exposure to small and medium sized businesses in America, which has always been the economic heart of America. So really, really good to pick it up. I also have QYLD and RYLD in my RSP as well. Last but not least is HMMJ. This is pretty much my only growth oriented ETF. I would even call this a speculative ETF and it's basically a cannabis sector index style ETF. So with this, you have uh, you're guaranteed to have the best cannabis companies in North America. So Tilray, Canopy Growth. Um, there's also a REIT in there that focuses on uh, cannabis, uh, you know, industrial properties, which is great. So um, the reason why I have this one in here is because it actually provides a quarterly dividend. How it does that? It's by securities lending. I won't get into it here, but it's a small dividend. It varies quarterly. It goes, you know, varies greatly every quarter. So uh, I definitely added it in here because it is still giving a quarterly uh, dividend, but I would consider this more a growth ETF, not a um, an income ETF. But if you want to know more about HMMJ, so if you didn't know personally, I, the only thing I speculate on or that I, I really think is going to grow is the cannabis sector. And I have videos for that. So make sure to check them out. On to split funds now. So I love split funds. They make a nice big part of my portfolio. Um, they all they use the covered call strategy. So split funds are basically covered call ETFs on steroids and that steroid is leverage. So that's the real difference um, with, with between cover call ETFs and split shares funds really is that leverage. So we'll go through them one by one. DFN, Dividend 15 is Quadrivest premier or biggest split fund. It focuses on 15 Canadian dividend stocks. It's literally a mirror image of uh, DS. The only difference is that DS does not use leverage. So the, uh, the only difference is the distribution policy. So the yield is obviously going to be higher with dividend 15. Uh, I have, I'm up on it a little bit. So my yield is 15.36%, which is really, really good. Um, the next one from Quadrivest is financial 15. So as you could guess, it has 15 financial stocks and it literally has the 10 best Canadian financial stocks. So the big six banks, the four life insurance companies and the big five US banks, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, and I always forget one. I don't know which which one is the last one, but um, really, really good funds here. Uh, Financial 15 did do a reverse split back in December, so it really tanked the share price. But right now, it's actually a good pickup because the unit nav is way over $20. So between these two, uh, Financial 15 is now the more conservative one because of that reverse split. So a really great time to pick it up. Unfortunately, I had it before. That's why I'm only at 10% yield. But I've added, added a little bit to it. But 25 k I would say, is my cap for now for this one. Um, but either way, a really good uh, pick uh, for financials right now. The next ones are all from Brompton here, the next uh, couple of ones, so we'll go through them. LBS is probably one of the riskier ones, but it's actually been doing amazingly well now. The unit nav is about to hit $20, which is incredible. I was lucky enough to buy this, a lot of uh, this during the crash, so um, my yield is incredible here at 17%. So this one owns the big, holds, sorry, the big six banks and the big four life insurance companies, just like um, FTN, just like DFN as well, but it's exclusively financials here. SBC is exclusively the six banks, the big six Canadian banks. It doesn't have the, the, the four life insurance companies. This one, the unit nav is like $25. So the SBC is what I would consider probably the low, one of the lower, lower risk split funds. You probably have almost no chance of missing dividends because the unit nav is so far ahead of that $15. Um, the only downside is, of course, that the yield is not going to be as high. So right now it's actually yielding like 8%, but luckily I'm, I have it, I bought it a bit cheaper. So I'm yielding 12%. GDV, probably 
you know, my favorite split fund of all time. I have to say that simply because it's very, very well diversified. So this is one of the best diversified split funds out there. Usually split funds, uh, like we saw, they focus on, on something specific like financials most of the time, but GDV does not focus on financials. It obviously has some, but it focuses on a bit of every sector and also all around the world, US, Europe, and Canada. So definitely my favorite split fund. Uh, right now it's doing really, really well. It is trading at a, at a pretty big premium, however, uh, but that makes sense because it's, it's pretty popular. So I think the yield is about 9% on this one. DGS, this is a Brompton's equivalent, I would say, or similar equivalent to DFN. So it focuses on Canadian stocks, except it has a lot more than 15. Uh, so this is by far the most risky split fund I have because the unit nav is about $16. So it's very, very close to that $15 threshold. Um, and as you could see, high risk though, high reward. This is definitely my highest yielding fund in my portfolio at 22%. I bought it at 540 and right now I think it's at $6. Um, PWI, so this is the brand new split fund that just came out uh, from Brompton and that focuses on sustainable power and infrastructure. So this is my, my new go-to when it comes to green energy. It has green energy, it has infrastructure, power, some telecom, um, it has Bell and TELUS, also some consumer discretionary related to cars. So it has Volvo, it has Volkswagen, so a nice, nice mix here. I'm probably going to do a video just on this fund but it's you know this is really is a brand spanking new fund um and the yield is uh, about um eight and a half right now so i think i picked it up at 960 it's actually a little bit lower than that so it's a great time to pick this one up definitely stay tuned for a video on this one soon the last two are from middle field so ens this is besides uh, nxf here my only energy uh, or energy specific fund and this focuses simply on Enbridge. Enbridge is the only company in this so this is my favorite way to own Enbridge instead of owning the Enbridge shares you could own ENS instead and it's basically like Enbridge with a lot of leverage so you're going to get really really high yield instead of 7% you'll get something like 12 or, th or 13% I think now it's at 11 because it's, it's recovering but a really awesome way to, to hold Enbridge in my opinion and RS is my new favorite way to own real estate. So yes, uh, Middlefield also manages uh, IDR, by the way, uh, which is the organic um, the or organic ETF. So it doesn't use any leverage or cover calls. RS does use leverage. So the yield is gonna be a, a little bit higher. It's, uh, it's a little under 8% right now. But as you can see from my position, uh, $40,000 like, like uh, Canoe EIT. So it's a very, very big position. Uh, simply because it's my favorite, my new favorite way of investing in REITs or real estate. So I, I sold off a lot of my single REITs to invest in this one. Um, and uh, my, you know, I'll show you that in a second, but uh, it has smart centers, it has a real can, it has a choice and Crombie and a lot of industrial uh, properties as well. So I strongly suggest you check it out if you haven't done so already. It was, I have a video on it. It's been a pick of the month. So definitely my new way. Uh, to invest in real estate. So now let's quickly go over the single REITs and single stocks that I have left. I won't spend too much time on it though. So I only have six single REITs left. So I would say that my portfolio cleanup, I'm down to 42 holdings in total, is pretty much complete now. I don't want to get rid of these REITs. I really like them. I'm up significantly on significantly on them, as well as the, my five remaining single stocks. So uh, if I were ha to have to redo my whole investing journey again, I would not own any single REITs or single stocks. I, f I know you might find that surprising, but the answer is you simply don't need them anymore because of split funds and cover call ETFs. You simply do not need to take the risk of owning single stocks and single REITs. But because I'm doing well on them, I'll probably keep keep them. Um, I did sell my Smart Centers REIT and cycled it into uh, RS because RS, you know, Smart Centers is actually the biggest holding in RS. So these are the single REITs I have left. I'm up on pretty much all of them. I'm doing well on all of them. And these are the single stocks that I have left. So Div is definitely my favorite one, Div and BRE. Uh, and they're basically all five are royalty stocks. So definitely focused for, you know, good for income focused investors, which is great. But, uh, you know, it's still risky owning single stocks 
and single REITs because you have a single point of failure, unlike ETFs or split funds where it's a collection of stocks. But either way, I'm definitely going to uh, hold on to these, but not add uh, anything further. So um, keep in mind, if you do download my my uh, sheet, there's a second tab where you could see what I bought and what I've sold. So I would say that the selling for me is pretty much almost over. I don't see myself selling anything anymore, just buying go, uh, going forward. So now let's just let me review my totals uh, for my portfolio. So grand total, total investment or my principal uh, or money that I've invested is 670K. Uh, my average yield is 10.6, which is incredible. This makes me happy every time I see it. So to have a dividend yield of 10.6 just means that, you know, if obviously it could fluctuate, but if it stays the same for a year, that year you're going to make 10.6% return right if you're a buy and hold investor like me who doesn't sell anything or doesn't plan to sell anything going forward uh, your annual return is basically your dividend yield so my average monthly income is now just shy of six thousand dollars fifty nine twenty two just I'm getting excited just about to hit 6k soon and total dividends that i have received lifetime is almost a hundred thousand dollars so i've actually made back 14 percent of my principal just in dividends so here is my 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 split as you can see single stock single reads very very low now single stocks only at seven percent single reads at 12. so these will continue to go down and down and down as i add more and more into income funds etfs and split funds so etfs are definitely my bread and butter i, I did reach a goal i always had a goal to make sure one third of my portfolio at least are etfs so that goal is set i actually want to go a little bit higher uh, income funds at 17 split funds at 29 um, you know it is a little bit high some people wouldn't feel comfortable but keep in mind that when it comes to split funds they are they are not all created equal so i have a lot of very very conservative split funds low risk split funds and, and some higher risk as well so it's important to make sure you're balanced and not to put too too much uh, on split funds because if a market crash happens while well, you could be stuck missing a lot of uh, dividends uh, and it could be a big blow to your, your, your income for, for however long that correction lasts. So in total for the year so far, I've made $26,350 in dividends alone. I also have some capital gains. That's from the cleanup that I have been doing, getting rid of some single stocks and single REITs that I was up on. So I do have a little tiny capital gain. But either way, the story really for an income investor is all about the dividends or the distributions. So there you have it. So there you have it, guys, my entire portfolio in black and white. As you can see, especially if you're a longtime follower, I own what I preach. I wouldn't feel comfortable suggesting a stock or fund if I, without owning it myself. Also, keep in mind, guys, once again, this is a pure income focused portfolio designed for high income, not capital appreciation. It's the strategy and style that fits my personality and our needs. And we love it. I mean, this is what gave us our financial freedom uh, at a relatively young age. Uh, so once again, am I against the mainstream growth strategy? No, not at all. The important thing is that you invest as early as possible. If ever you want to know more about my investing strategy or philosophy in detail, uh, check out the other videos I made on this subject. I have a YouTube playlist specifically uh, where I talk about or all the videos videos where I talk about my investing strategy and philosophy. I'll put the link in the description below. So as always, guys, please support us and this channel by hitting the like button. It's free for you. Helps the channel out. So it's a win-win. Also, make sure to check out our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca, where you could purchase my digital product, the Ultimate Dividend uh, Passive Income Investing Package, which is all my years of research. Put in a couple of spreadsheets, all the stocks you ever need, stocks and funds, of course, to build your own custom portfolio. It's great for Canadians, but also for Americans. I have a, uh, my second version that came out uh, recently has a lot more American or U.S. listed funds. And uh, it also has sample portfolios, two for Canadians, two for Americans. So make sure to check it out. You could also book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me personally. If ever you want me to answer any of your questions, re review your portfolio, help you build a new portfolio, modify an existing one, uh, whatever it is, I'll do my, my best to help you. Uh, it's very easy to book an appointment. It's right on the homepage. There's a calendar. Unfortunately, right now I'm completely booked until August, but the August appointments will open up shortly. So stay tuned for that. I will let you guys know. Don't worry uh, with a new video once the August 
uh, appointments are, are open so you won't miss out on that finally make sure you're subscribed guys so you don't miss out on my future content community posts and surveys of the month the next one is coming out tomorrow like i told you it's all designed to help you on your investing journey we're also on social media on instagram on facebook so join us there if you use those our facebook group is growing we're like 1400 members now We've got our little community going there so make sure to check it out and join us there the mission of this channel my mission remains the same guys it's to help everyday working people to invest on their own in order for them to build their own stream of passive income to enhance quality of life. So with that, take care, guys. Stay safe. See you next time. And of course, go Habs go.